Good morning, my friends. I'm here today in uh, Lake Nona, Florida, attending something called the Lake Nona Forum. And this afternoon, around two o'clock, I'm going to be giving a talk on the nature of reality, <coughs> which, of course, you know, is my obsession. So what I thought I'd do today, as soon as we have a quorum here, uh, as soon as we get to a thousand people in this uh, cyberspace uh, community, uh, then I am going to show you a meditation on knowing yourself in order to know reality. So if you like this idea, please send me uh, a notification. Uh, Santi Rap, hello. Um, do you like this idea? Shelly, do you like this idea? In Las Vegas, uh, Tim, good morning. Terry, good morning. Sri Hari, good morning. Uh, Michelle Lynn, good morning. Teresa Bunker, good morning. Shaheen Khan, uh, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Miguel uh, in Mexico, good morning. But uh, let me know if you like this idea of our doing a meditation right now uh, for knowing ourself. And uh, as a result of knowing ourself, knowing the world. <clears throat> so if you like this idea, please press the like button. Would tell me you like it. Invite other people uh, to join our conversation and encourage them to invite other people. And if we all like this idea, then we'll do a meditation right now on knowing yourself and knowing reality as a result of knowing ourselves. So we are up to 700 people here uh, in this uh, cyberspace, cyberspace community. And if um, you're ready, Let's do it now. Let's do the meditation right now. We are 700 people. I have a, a keynote or a talk to deliver. So um, I think we should start. Shall we start? Okay, so wherever you are, unless you're driving, and if you're driving, you shouldn't be here anyway. Um, but wherever you are, sit comfortably. Uh, you don't have to close your eyes. Keep your eyes open with soft gaze. Soft gaze means be aware of the space around you. That's it. Be aware of uh, the space uh, 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 around you. And know that you as body-mind are also engulfed in the space around you. So... The first thing to recognize is that awareness uh, allows us to know experience. That's it. Awareness allows us to know experience. So awareness is that which knows experience. And how does awareness know experience? Well, awareness knows experience as perceptual activity and then as the interpretation of perceptual activity. So awareness is the background in all perceptual activity and it is also the interpretation of all perceptual activity. And without awareness, there is neither the experience of perceptual activity nor the interpretation of perceptual activity. The perceptual activity is what we call the body, a changing experience, the body, but also the world. Perceptual activity is the world, the changing experience of the world. Its interpretation is thoughts and emotions and feelings. And uh, of course, um, um, all these narratives that come around, the interpretation. Uh, these narratives have been religious narratives, theological narratives, philosophical narratives now. 
the um, the uh, narrative that we call science, the story that we call science. So all experience is perceptual activity, it's interpretation as mental activity and a story, a narrative that creates constructs around perceptual activity. Okay? Constructs around perceptual activity. So now with your eyes open, just feel your body. And your experience of the body will be, if you just feel the body, your experience of the body will be an intermittent stream of sensations. And now instead of feeling the body, look around you and what you see is shapes, colors, forms, including the colors, shapes and forms you're experiencing on your screen and behind me. Okay. So this is the perceptual activity that we call seeing. Seeing creates the construct of objects. Before something is called an object, it's visually speaking, a shape, a color, form, given meaning, it becomes an object of experience, including your body. So move from, move from feeling the body to seeing the body and seeing everything else around you. See yourself, see everything around you. Who is having this experience? The shortest answer is, I am having this experience that we call the physical world and the physical body. I am having this experience. Now, if you want, shift your focus to the experience of sound, including the sound of my voice. And what is this sound? It's an intermittent stream of sensations that we call sound. Who is having this experience? I mean, the simplest way to answer this, I am having the experience of sound. So I am is the background for all experience. I am is awareness. I am is awareness. I am is having the experience of sounds, of tastes, of what we call fragrance, uh, uh, flavors, fragrant, fragrances, sounds, sensations, <coughs> perceptual activity, colors, forms, tastes, textures, hardness, softness, wetness, dryness. There is no experience that is outside of I am. That's clear, right? So just shift your focus of attention from sensation to perception to sound to thought. Think one thought, mother. Okay, any thought. Think one thought, mother. And that thought embodies an entanglement of experiences. Images, you see your mother, you hear her voice, you can smell her skin, you can feel the sensation of touching her or kissing her. Just that one word, mother, embodies an entanglement of experiences, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, sounds, <clears throat> textures. Experience is a gooey mess of wetness, dryness, noise, sounds, textures, flavors, smells, fragrances, thoughts, images, feelings, emotions, but who or what is having this experience? I am. So I am is the awareness that allows the coexistence of all experience, all experiences, and the coexistence of all opposite experiences and everything that appears in between, even thoughts. What is it that thought appears to? What is it that sensation appears to? What is it that sound appears to? 
What is it that objects appear to? What is it that colors appear to? What is it that feelings appear to? What is it that thought appears to? What is it that the object, perceptual object, that we call the brain appears to? What is it that the perceptual activity that we call the body appears to? I am. I am is the background of all experience. It's the subject of all experience. You can't look for it out there in experience because it is always that which is looking. It is always that which is hearing. It is always that which is watching. Tef London says it's the mind. No, 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 no. It is not the mind. It is the awareness in which the mind appears as an intermittent stream of thoughts, feelings, intentions, imagination, creativity, insight, intuition. I am is the background. So the background of silent, uh, background of so sound is I am as silence. The background of space, is, sorry, the background of objects is space. The furniture in my room and the space in this room and this body that is also in this room is all engulfed in the space in this room. So space is the background of all objects, including the objects that seem to move about by themselves, which we call biological organisms. And then the other objects that move in, to, in the relationship to each other as a result of the elements and forces of the universe, including gravity. But all of that experience of what we call objects is actually happening in this space. The space is engulfing all objects. So space is the background of all the objects and space is actually the background between perceptual snapshots so the space is imbued with awareness that's why in sanskrit it's called chitakash sound background silence objects background space what's the background of color it's colorless and formless Light, but light is not photons because photons are a construct in awareness for the experience of colors, shapes and forms. So what is the background of colors, shapes and forms? That which is totally without color, without shape and without form. What is the background of any sensation? Pleasure, pain uh, and everything in between. Okay, what is the background of any sensation? Because sensations are feelings and they arise and subside in what we call the body. But what is experiencing the sensation, including that which we call the body? It's the background of bliss. The background of all sensations is bliss. Similarly, the background of all feelings is total equanimity. Okay, whatever the feeling is, happiness, uh, sadness, guilt, shame, depression, love, uh, compassion. What is the background before it modifies itself into a sensation? Because these are all sensations. That background is bliss. And that background of feelings associated with those sensations is equanimity. And what is the background of thought? It's pure consciousness. Okay, so the background, if we look at all experience, is silence, is space, is colorless, shapeless, formless being. The background of sensations is bliss. The background of feelings, equanimity in the background of thought, pure consciousness. If we look at this very carefully, I am is the background of every experience. So 
now. Look at an object around you and say, I am present in that object as the background of awareness. Look at any color, shape, form. I am the background of that experience. Listen to any sound. I, silent awareness, is in the background of that sound. Feel any sensation. I am is the background of that. Look at your body. I am the background of that. Experience sadness. I am the background of sadness. Experience happiness. I am the background of sadness. I am is the background of every experience. I am is present in every experience. Therefore, I am is present in every object that you see. Even the experience of the Milky Way galaxy is a sensation in I am. I am is all there is. I am not is not the body, but the experience of the body. I am is not the mind, but the experience of the mind. I am not a sensation, but the experience of the sensation. I am not the perception, I am the experience of the perception. So where is I am? Where can I find I am? You can't because I am is the one that's looking. I am is the container of perceptual activity and also the interpretation of perceptual activity. I am cannot be located because it doesn't have a shape, form, texture, sound, taste or smell. It is made of nothing. It is infinite. I am is that in which the whole universe is arising and subsiding. And because I am is not in space and time, it is immortal, it is infinite, it is timeless, it's who you are. So for today, just keep that as a mantra. I am. Don't attach experience to it. And suddenly you will realize I am is not only the conceiver, the constructor of experience, the knower of experience, but also the metabolizer of experience, the source of experience, the enjoyer of experience, and that in which all experience subsides. And I am is timeless being. Space-time are constructed in I am. <clears throat> time is a total construct. It doesn't exist. But based on this time, we also have constructs of birth and death. So here's an experiment, another meditation. Uh, think of your childhood right now. Just bring a little image in your awareness of your childhood. That's the past. Now think of your next vacation. See what you're planning to do, going to Hawaii or whatever. That's the future, both in consciousness. The past in consciousness, the future in consciousness. Now look at your watch. You say, uh, oh, the time now is 11.38, but only in the East Coast. What is time on the West Coast? What is time on um, in uh, England? What is time on Mars? What is time on Jupiter? What is time in another galaxy? So the whole experience of time is in I am. I am is the creator of time. Also, the creator as a result of the theater of experience, which we call space and time. And Cognitive scientists like Don Hoffman are saying that space-time are the visual tool, the visual interface for us to have all experience. But even space-time is constructed, conceived, and comes into experience in the one place, I am. Therefore, I am is beyond space-time and all experiences. It is free to construct any experience. That freedom to construct any experience ultimately is infinite freedom and infinite
creativity. Okay? And that's who we are. Infinite freedom, infinite creativity. That's it for today. Lots of love. Take care. See you tomorrow. Today's mantra, I am. No experience attached to it. Instead of being aware of the contents of experience and the interpretation of experience, be aware of that awareness, which is called I am, in which all experience is constructed, conceived, governed, and comes into existence in a lucid and vivid now, the lucid dream of experience. But in the background of all that is I am eternal, infinite, timeless being. Free. Totally free. Take care.